You know, people ask me often, why is it easy to misdiagnose VTE, venous thromboembolism, or what the public calls blood clots? And it mimics so many other things. And when you go to someone, a clinician, because you have pain, the orientation is just not to think that, oh, well, it could be a blood clot. So someone's going to say, oh, you have pain in the back of your leg, your lower leg, it must be a sprained muscle. Or in several situations, people said, you must have an infection and the muscle will give you antibiotics. When the obvious diagnosis is, oh, you probably have a, v a DVT or a blood clot. And we can do a simple test to check for it. But they're not looking for that. They don't think of that. That can be really bad if it breaks off and it goes to the lung and causes a pulmonary embolism. So pain practitioners need to be aware that it may not be the normal pain that you're programmed to think it is, but you have to think outside the box and say, hmm, back of the leg pain, I got to ask some questions. I got to look at context. Has the person traveled recently? Is it a woman on the pill? Is it someone who has cancer? Is there some reason why they might have another risk factor? If they had hip surgery or have they had um, a, a catheter or something that w that's been stuck in their arm, maybe it's a blood clot. Well, primary care physicians need to be aware of certain symptoms that occur with blood clots, and they mimic other symptoms. So if somebody has pain in their back, for example, um, and maybe they have a little shortness of breath, that could be a pulmonary embolism. If they have pain in the back of their leg, and you know, you ask the questions about context. Have you traveled? Are you on the pill? Has anybody in your family had a blood clot? Have you been in a hospital recently? It's, you can't look at the symptoms without looking at the context. And the symptoms plus context means you've got to look for a blood clot. And looking for a blood clot is so easy. Before you go doing an MRI and a whole bunch of fancy tests, you can just look for a blood clot. And that may be your answer. If not, you've ruled out a possible problem that could cause death. You're not going to die from low back pain, but you can die from a blood clot that maybe turns into pulmonary embolism. A thrombophilia is a genetic condition that gives you predisposition for clotting, dis you know, for clotting. We call it a clotting disorder. And I'm not going to go into the whole clotting cascade because it's very complicated, but in the process of clotting, you have factors that make you clot and factors that make you not clot. And for example, everybody knows that with hemophilia you bleed, and that's because there's a factor within the clotting cascade that's missing that doesn't allow you to clot. Thrombophilias are kind of the opposite. They are factors that are there too much, so it's, it's off balance, so you clot more, or you have a tendency to clot more. Because you have a thrombophilia, it doesn't mean that you're going to have a clot, but if you travel for more than four hours, if you're on the pill, if you've been in the hospital, if you're having hip surgery or knee surgery or you're immobile, you have a greater chance of having a blood clot than everyone else. In some situations, some of these thrombophilias can even cause women to have miscarriages, and they may not even know they have these thrombophilias. So it's important to know because it's part of the history, um, and they may not know, but you can ask, you know, have, have other people in your family had clots? something to look out for because if they know they have a thrombophilia, and an example of that is factor V Leiden, that's probably the most common and the one that if people know about these conditions that they've heard of, then you want to um, be a little more cautious. So if a person says they have lower leg pain and they have factor V Leiden, then you should definitely get them a test for, for a blood clot. Um, you shouldn't, you know, don't pass go, don't collect $200, go check for factor V, you know, to see if it's a blood clot because of the factor V Leiden. This is probably the most important area of medicine where context is important. It's not just the symptom, it's what did you do yesterday? Are you an athlete that, you know, you think, oh, he's in such good shape, but you find out, oh yeah, I ran three marathons. Where was the marathon? If the marathon was in Tokyo and he was in a plane for 12 hours and he's complaining about lower leg pain, chances are you need to check that out, make sure it's not a blood clot. Just because someone's healthy, young women who are on the pill, they get blood clots, and some of them drop dead of, thr of pulmonary embolism. So go look at context. What have they been doing? Where have they been? Have they been in a hospital recently? Are they on the pill? Don't just look at somebody and say, oh, you're healthy. It must be something else. Just think that anyone can have a blood clot. An 11-year-old boy I talked about in my session, he had hip surgery, and he died of a blood clot. He had, went to a pulmonary embolism. He told his mother he was having a heart attack, and he died. 
So anybody can have a blood clot. doesn't discriminate based on age. And I think that's really important for um, primary care physicians to remember.